very warm welcome to our act of worship for uh, Warsop and Sukhumth churches. It's wonderful to be back with you. Uh, I've not been very well uh, over this last week or so, and uh, so it's wonderful to be here and to to be back worshiping with you. And thank you to everyone who sent me messages of prayer and support and uh, those little acts of kindness uh, that I received. So thank you very much for those. And thank you also to Pat and the people who looked after the service last Sunday. Um, it was nice for me to join in with you, uh, even though uh, it was propped up. <laughs> but it's lovely to be back. Now, our service today is the service, uh, the Sunday before Lent. And um, it's also the uh, it's Valentine's Day and I was reminded of this on Facebook. Uh, somebody was wondering if we'd got a Valentine's theme to today's service. Sorry about that, we haven't got a Valentine's theme for today, but do remember that no matter what, God loves you and all those that you love. And may you have a wonderful day, whatever you're doing. Uh, it will be very different from how things have been in the past. And some notices, uh, Ash Wednesday this year, it's on Wednesday this, this week, on the 17th of February. Uh, our service will be at 7.30 and if you would like to join that, please let us know because it's on Zoom, it's a deanery service. So you'll see all the different churches in the deanery taking part and adding parts and contributing to the service. So uh, that's at 7.30 and let us know if you want the Zoom link that's myself, the church wardens, or our parish office, and uh, we can send that link to you so you can join in. Also, as we are approaching Lent, we're going to be sending out some little books uh, for uh, those of you who have not been able to access anything online, uh, so you can join in in that book. I'll be talking a little bit more about that uh, when I bring you my reflection for today, so please do uh, join in with that and we have a few books spare so if anybody would like to join in with that uh, please do and let us know and we'll send one out to you. So we join together today in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you and Amen. also so with you. you and so we pray. Almighty God to whom Amen. all hearts are open all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. My brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate the presence of Christ, let us call to mind and confess our sins. And so let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. We say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We now join together, knowing that God forgives us as we say the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, 
and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And our collect for today, the Sunday before Lent. Almighty Father, whose Son was revealed in majesty before he suffered death upon the cross, give us grace to perceive his glory, that we may be strengthened to suffer with him and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we're now going to uh, David, who is going to bring us our first reading for today. Thank you, David. The reading is from St. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 4, verses 3 to 6. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts, to give the light of the knowledge of glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, David. Now we hear our Gospel reading. <clears throat> hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them any more, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them not to tell anyone about what they had seen, until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May my words be in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, whether we have climbed a mountain or not, we all know that mountaintop experiences deliver very powerful emotions. Now, many of you know that Tony and I love Scotland. We tell everybody at every opportunity. Um, and once or twice, we've managed a Munro. Uh, that's a peak that's over a thousand feet. But many times we have climbed up hillsides that are very steep too. All of these, no matter how high, covered many experiences that we enjoyed. Mainly the effort to get up there. And now some of you may have heard this story before, but I'm going to share this story with you. Uh, one time 
when we were in Scotland. It was actually, I think, our 25th wedding anniversary. So there we go. And um, there was snow at the top of this mountain. And uh, we hadn't had a lot of snow that year and Tony was determined that whether we got to the top or not, he was determined that we were going to get to the snow line. So wherever the snow reached, we were going to get there. So the thing was, the snow had melted all around the mountainside and the ground was very, very boggy and every step was a struggle. So not only were we climbing, but you had to pull your feet up because they kept getting stuck in the boggy ground. So no matter how far we seem to go, this snow line just seemed to be unattainable. It seemed so close and then it would get further and further away. By this time, Tony was well in front of me and he kept turning round and looking at me and saying, come on, come on. It's doable, it's doable. Well, I was getting pretty um, frustrated with Tony at this point, but he did encourage me and we did get there. We got to that snow line. But when we looked back over the amount that we climbed and the scenery that was there before us, it was absolutely am amazing and well worth it, if not only for the retelling of this story many times. Now these are literally, mount this was literally a mountain top experience. We have the effort, we have the struggle, the time it takes, the conversations that you have on your way up there. And then when you actually get there, there's this view spread out in front of you. Sometimes this view has remained the same for thousands of years. There's the wind in your face and your hair. There's the silence and the stillness and the thrill of being at a dizzy height, feeling almost like you're at the top of the world. All these things culminate in the excitement of drawing all these experiences together. Literally, mountaintop experiences. But there are other mountaintop experiences, which don't include actually climbing mountains. Sometimes they can be very different. And when I was reflecting on this, when I was preparing for today, I was thinking of the effort of dear Captain Tom and his very powerful effort to walk around his garden. That same walk, which inspired so many people in a time of our greatest need and others did the same children who had lost limbs elderly ladies climbing stairs people who were really struggling it inspired them to make that effort too then there is also what all of us have been going through over this past year the effort, this effort that we're in the middle of still, which seems at times never ending. But slowly and with perseverance and care for each other, we will get there. Then again, there are other instances like the one we're going through at the moment, which don't include any physical movement at all. They could be completing a course of study the effort then of feeling that everything is helpless, hopeless and you're not going to achieve what you set out to do. But eventually you have that euphoria of reaching your goal. And then on the other hand, there is treatment, medical treatment if you are ill. And I'm sure there are many, many more things that happen to us in life that you can think of that are called mountaintop experiences. Whether those things be physically or mentally. So turning back to our gospel reading, I feel that it is no accident that we hear this story of the transfiguration as we approach the beginning of Lent. Peter, James and John are led by Jesus to climb up a high mountain and there they are rewarded with seeing God's glory revealed. Within the structure of Mark's Gospel, 
this transfiguration forms a parallel with Jesus' own baptism. A few weeks ago, the first half of the story began with Jesus' baptism. You may remember the echoes of those words, this is my son, the beloved, with him I am well pleased. That baptism leads up to Peter's confession of Christ. This is lesson one. Jesus teaches his disciples and then with the transfiguration and God's reaffirmation of the beloved status of his son, lesson two begins. So having established Jesus as Messiah, the purpose of his Messiahship unfolds and the un ultimate destination of this purpose is foreseen in the glory on the mountain. The route to that goal, however, Jesus still must go to the cross. And that's the story that we're moving towards now. We know that Jesus will die and rise again for us. But that doesn't mean that we should rush through our journey of Lent. Like our mountaintop experience, part of the euphoria is in the effort. If someone transported us to the top of that mountain or to the end of that course, or at the end of Tom's walking round the garden, that would be nice but it wouldn't feel the same without the effort. And so this is the same with our journey through Lent. So let us not miss Lent. We have this opportunity where we have hopefully more time to ponder what God loves, God's love means for us during this Lent. Let us not rush towards Easter. We have that reassurance that Jesus will die and rise again for us. Jesus is trying to instruct us as he taught his disciples as we go through Lent. I mentioned at the beginning of this service, we are following the Church of England's Lenten Guide. Live Lent or Live Lent. It covers God's story and our story too, to help us make God's story so much a part of what our story is too. And we all have many, many different and varied uh, stories in our own lives. So we have a few books, as I said at the beginning, if Tony, you could pass me that book, that would be wonderful. Thank you. These little books, Live Lent, and so they are going to be winging their way to many of you, well, many people who can't actually access our services, but we have a few left. So if you want a copy, you can contact our church wardens, myself or the office, and we'll see if we have enough for you. But also, very kindly, Alex is going to be sending out uh, a connection to an app that you can download, and you can follow it that way if you don't have one of these books. Each day it has a reading, a reflection or activity and a prayer. It's very simple, it's not too onerous and it's not really a study, it's something to help us through these dates of Lent. So in these times we are facing we need to remember that God is with us, he doesn't forget us and we should try and spend some time with God, trusting him and allowing him to deepen our faith. We can use this Lenten time to be united with each other and with God as we move towards Easter and that mountaintop experience when we come to Easter morning. And so let us pray. Eternal God, revealed in glory, hidden in the mystery. Give us wisdom in your service. Help us to walk with you on our journey through Lent so that we may come to the mountaintop with renewed euphoric faith. Amen. Amen.
So now we come to a time where we can reaffirm our faith and our trust in God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And so we turn to our affirmation of faith. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took on our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. We now turn to a time of intercession uh, and Sue is going to lead us in those prayers. Thank you, Sue. Let us pray. Almighty God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, we give you thanks and praise for all you have given us. Help us to care for our planet and for each other. As we celebrate St Valentine's Day, we give you thanks for the gift of love, especially the gift of your everlasting love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all whom are sick in mind, body or spirit, those known to us and those unknown. We give you thanks for all who care for them in any way. We give special thanks for those in the community helping to roll out the vaccination programmes, helping to slow down the spread of this virus. We pray for all who have departed this earthly life as a result of illness, accident, violence or violence. Comfort all who mourn their passing. And in our own parish, we pray for the souls of Margaret Brown, George Edward, Beryl Clark, Mary Johnson, and Brian Sims, Norman Lovely, Kathleen Jarvis, Douglas Emery, Barbara Tyler, Dennis Priest, Barry Williamson, Brian Roney and Stella Bellamy. Lord, lead them into your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for our Queen and members of our government. May they continue to serve the people and make wise decisions which will help this country to recover, not just financially, but as a new united nation. We pray for countries throughout the world that all may soon have an organised vaccination programme. We give you thanks for all the scientists who are continually working to research this deadly virus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we draw near to the beginning of Lent, help us to reflect on our own lives, to seek forgiveness for our sins of body and mind. May we use this time of Lent to grow nearer to you and to understand the mysteries and ministry of your Son while he was here on earth. May we strive to follow him, to not be led by, into temptation by others, and take responsibility and sing, seek forgiveness for our own failings. Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for those lovely prayers, Sue. And so now we come to our time of peace. 
Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We virtually meet in his name, but we do share his peace with one another. The peace of the Lord be always with you and, and also with, with you. you. And we offer you that sign of peace. If there's someone in your household to share peace with, uh, please share them uh, peace at this point. Peace be with you. Peace be with you all. And we're now going to uh, sing the hymn, uh, Shine Jesus Shine, which reflects the transfiguration on the mountain top. Thank you. Lord is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendour and the majesty, for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. The Lord is here, his spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy, at all times and in all places, to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. <clears throat> Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, for ever praising you and saying together, Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praise as Heavenly Father through your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. When the same night he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Accept that through him our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, through him and in him and with him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Mm. 
Let us pray. O oh Lord, in this wonderful sacrament, you have let us, left us a memorial of your passion. Grant us, we pray, so to venerate the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who is alive and reigns with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> and our post-communion prayer. Holy God, we see your glory in the face of Jesus Christ. May we who are partakers at this table reflect his life in word and deed, that all the world may know his power to change and save. This we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And a final blessing as we go into our Sunday. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.